Now as Moshe proceeded to give all the commandments that Abba Yah had given to him, the Lord Hebrews, the Ten Commandments that Abba Yah had given to us were also broken down into details in the scriptures. Where, may you ask? In the first five books of the Torah, Genesis being the commandments Abba Yah gave to Adam and Hawa and his descendants, and the books of the Torah and the remaining books of the Torah, which include Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. It is in the Torah where Abba Yah gives us his understanding of the commandments in detail and how he will punish us, punish us if we would break his laws and commandments. It's in the Torah, little Hebrews, that he gives us the provisions of his commandments. Now after Moshe spoke to Israel all the Ten Commandments that Abba Yah gave to us, he went back up to Mount Sinai to receive all of Yah's written laws and commandments to give to us. But did you know, little Hebrews, when he went back up the mountain of Sinai to finish getting Yah's laws and commandments, those stiff-necked Jews got impatient, saying, Where is Moshe? Where is Yah? And made for themselves a golden calf to worship, right at the base of the mountain where Yah was. Now, if that isn't being wicked and disobedient, so Abba Yah told Moshe what they were doing and to come down from the mountain. So Moshe came down from the mountain and stood at the base of the mountain and commanded, Who is for Yah to stand by me? And all who did come to stand by him were the sons of Lewi, of Lewi. And all that did not stand by him, Yah commanded Moshe and the sons of Lewi to smite them and to take the breath of life from them. So you see, little Hebrews, Yah had given his command. He was through playing with us. He was through playing with Israel. He meant for us to keep all of his commandments. And Abba Yah cursed us, and he had us to mingle in the wilderness for 40 years, and we never made it to the land that Abba Yah had promised us, because why, little Hebrews? We didn't keep our end of the covenant. You see, little Hebrews, in order for Abba Yah to bless us, we had to keep our end of the covenant, which was to obey his voice and to follow his laws and commandments. That is the reason why we have suffered the curses now that Abba Yah has placed and put upon Israel now. That was part of the provisions and punishment Abba Yah gave us, gave to us with his laws and commandments. And it's and it's when we start obeying his commandments, living by his commandments, and speaking his name, and taking his name, his laws and word to all the nations, it is then when Abba Yah will bless us and keep his part and promise of the covenant that he made to us, Israel. And with that being said, little Hebrews, we are going to go over the first three commandments that Abba Yah gave to Moshe to give to us. Commandment number one, Exodus 20, verses two to three. I am Yah, your father, who brought you out of the land of Mizraim, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other mighty ones against my face. Now what does this mean, little Hebrews? This means we must acknowledge that Abba Yah is the self-existing one. He is the almighty. We must have no other supreme beings in comparison to Abba Yah. You see, little Hebrews, when people worship other supreme beings or gods, it's because they do not want to follow Yah's laws and commandments. They want to worship gods, demons, idols. They want to worship other supreme beings that's going to give them the things that they want. When we say God, what do we mean? What does God mean? God means an invoked one, a pagan deity, a pagan supreme being. A supreme being that many think was going to give them the things that they want. Abba Yah says, there is to be no other mighty ones against my face. Commandment number two, Exodus 20 verses 4 through 5. You do not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness 
of that which is in the heavens above or which is in the earth beneath or which is in the waters under the earth you do not bow down to them nor serve them for i yah your father am a jealous yah visiting the crookedness of the fathers on the children of the third and fourth generations of those who hate me but showing kindness to thousands to those who love me and guard my commandments now what does abba yah means you do not make for yourself any carved images abba yah means we should not be worshiping statues false images symbols let's give an example of this little hebrews you have people today who worship buddha you have people who worship serpents and demons you have people who practice what we call kundalini yoga in which they call upon a demon serpent which is supposed to give them special powers bring down this sort of energy or magicness this is wicked little hebrews and also in regards to celebrating what do you see today celebrating traditions of men celebrating holidays is another form that people have been worshiping carved idols and images january when the new year comes in who are people worshiping father time february on valentine's day cupid april easter there is the Easter fertility bunny. In October, what do we have in October? During Halloween, we have people who are worshiping demons, demonic images. They put on masks. They want to be like these images. They are worshiping demons during that time of year. Christmas time, Christmas as we say it. They are worshiping the image and idol of Satan, Santa Claus. Abba Yah says we are not supposed to be worshiping any false deities or carved images. Now to go more in depth, little Hebrews, on symbolism, you have people today who are wearing the cross, which is supposed to be symbolizing righteousness, symbolizing the death of Yehoshua, but it has Jesus on it, simply wickedness. You also have people in different religions who use beads, little symbols, and they chant with these beads, little Hebrews. Another form of worshiping symbols, carved images, and idols. Abba Yah says you are not to make for yourself any carved images. Commandment Number three, Exodus 20, verse 7. You do not bring the name of Yah, your father, your mighty one, to naught. For Yah does not leave the one unpunished who brings his name to naught. What does this mean, little Hebrews? Yah means we are not to take his name in vain. We are not to call him by any name. His name is Yah. There is no other name. You have a lot of people today who says that that Yah goes by many names, such as Allah, Jehovah, Yahweh. There is only one name, and his name is Yah. We must not take his name in vain. There are a lot of people who change his name and call him by other names, just as we stated. You can't change his name. His name is Yah, to fit their own translations, they said, to fit their own meaning of who they're saying Yah's name is. Yah says we are not to take his name in vain. And most of all, little Hebrews, we are not to call him a God. As explained earlier, a God is a supreme being, an invoked one, a pagan deity. Who have ascended up into heaven, or descended? Who have gathered the wind in his fist? Who have bound the waters in a garment? Who have established all the ends of the earth? What is his name, and what is his son's name, if you can tell? 
Many proclaim that the Most High has many names. Some say knowing his correct name doesn't matter, while others profess his true name is equal to salvation itself. Even the Negro spiritual song, Kumbaya, which means come by ya, come by ya, is honoring the name of the Creator. The phrase hallelujah, which is the highest praise phrase, means praise you, ya. Even the true names of the apostles carry Yah's name. In Hebrew, Matthew is pronounced Matit Yah. John is pronounced Yachanan. Judas and Jude both are pronounced Yehuda. And James is pronounced Yaakov. Notice, in your King James Version of the Bible, the spelling of those names are different. Isaiah doesn't have the Yah at the end, nor does Jeremiah, Obadiah, etc. Hallelujah has Jah in the suffix. Why is that? There has been a conspiracy from the beginning of the history of man by the adversary Satan to remove the name of Yah from the mouth of men. The definition of the name Yah means to self-exist or the self-existing one. He is the only entity in all of creation that exists from his own power. No other entity can be called the self-existing one. Vain means without real significance, value or importance, baseless or worthless. By you calling on the Most High by another name, you have made his true name baseless, worthless, or vain. Out of common respect, a man will introduce himself to you by his name. You will forever know this man by the name he introduced himself by. We must also note that the KJV says not to take the name of the Lord in vain. This is incorrect. Lord is not a name, it's a title, so is God. Lord and God both have roots in ancient paganism. Both can be traced back to ancient pagan deities. All religions worship a god, god, or goddesses. The only thing that will separate your god from the next is his or her name. The phrase printed on the United States money, in God we trust, should be changed to whose God do you trust? With that being said, little Hebrews, that concludes the first three commandments in this lesson, and we will be bringing to you the remaining of the commandments in the upcoming lessons, little Hebrews, because it's important for us to keep the commandments in our hearts and to uphold to the covenant that our ancestors made with our Yah. The covenant that our ancestors broke and chose not to keep the reason why we have suffered the reason why we are cursed now if we follow y'all's laws and commandments and uphold to our covenant that we are then we are protected by our Yah we are blessed with his Ruach HaKadosh his wisdom his understanding his righteousness and his blessing we have also made a choice to do what is right, little Hebrews. Thus, we have come back to the covenant and upheld to the agreement we made with Abba Yah, which is to follow his laws and commandments and to place them upon our hearts, to take, them, to take and teach his laws to the nations and to the world, and to be a set-apart nation. Leviticus 26 and 40. But if they confess the crookedness and the crookedness of their fathers with their trespass in which they trespassed against me, in which they sinned against me, and that they also have walked contrary to me, and that I also have walked contrary to them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if their uncircumcised heart is then humbled, and they accept the punishment of their crookedness, then I shall remember my covenant with Jacob and my covenant with Yiscap, and also remember my covenant with Abraham and remember the land. And with thus being said, little Hebrews, that's the end of this lesson. Shabbat.
Shalom.